Welcome back to our Falling Object Game tutorial. Uh, in this video we are going to be looking at how to set up our player script and get him moving back and forth. So player movement and handling the edges of the screen is our goal for today. So in our project here we already have our camera set up and our, we're all set up from last video and then we have our uh, player character sprite here. So first of all, let's give him a better name. He shouldn't be called Falling Object Sprite Zero. We should call him something like Player. Sounds like a good idea. And so we can just rename him. I did that by just clicking once on him and then clicking again to get the name. Or if you want to, you can click here and go up in the inspector and change the name right up here. That's how you change the names of objects here. So our player game object has a name, and if you look over here in the inspector, he's got a transform, which gives his position, his rotation, and a scale. And then we also have uh, a sprite renderer. This is what actually draws him to the screen. So it says which sprite to draw. It's our sprite from our sprite sheet that we sliced up last time. Uh, and there's some other settings that we can play with here, but we really don't need to right now. Um, that just draws him uh, onto the screen. If he doesn't have a sprite render, if I uncheck this box, which means the sprite render is not active, he disappears. Still in the scene, but he's not being drawn. So that just draws him to the scene. Okay, so we're going to make a script for our player. So um, I've already created one here, but to make a new C-sharp script, you just hit Create in the project panel, C-sharp script, give it a name. Uh, I call mine Player Script. Remember, you don't put any spaces in the name of a script. You're going to have issues later on. And then we'll open that script up in uh, Mono Develop. So here is my player script, just empty uh, basic script. So we're going to go back to our project overview text file that I had here that's going to kind of direct us through our game. And uh, here's our player. That's who we're working on today. And we define some behaviors we want him to have. So we want him to be able to move left and right using the arrow keys and the A and D key. And we either want to block him at the edges of the screen or have him wrap around. Uh, shooting bullets and being hit by bullets, that's going to have to be for another day because we're not going to have bullets in our scene yet. Um, so we're just going to work on these first two items here, moving left and right and blocking at the screen edges. So back in Unity here, let's take a look at uh, what's going on. So what I want to have happen is when I hit the left arrow or the A key, I want my player to move like this, this way. Okay, When I hit my right arrow or my D key, I want him to move backwards this way. We're not going to allow him to move up or down. We're going to keep him stuck right down here at the bottom of the screen. So our first uh, goal here, our first problem to solve is how can I get input from the keyboard? Uh, when you are putting a game together, when you are programming, what you have to do is you have to identify a problem that needs to be solved in your code and then you have to figure out how to solve that and you want to just chop these problems up into small little parts so we've got the bigger uh, problem here of moving back and forth and blocking at the, the screen edges and moving with the keyboard keys so the first step in that would be pressing the key that's the first event that has to happen in our game for our player to move is pressing keys and responding to input so in unity we have some really nice built-in input type tools uh, so I'm going to go up here to Edit, and I'm going to go to Project Settings, and then to the Input. This is going to give me what's called my Input Manager. So in the Inspector here now, I have my Input Manager, and, it's, and it might look like this when you first open it. You can just hit that arrow to flip that open. And inside of here, you have a bunch of axes. Okay, These are all pre-set up uh, controls. Um, the one that I want is this first one called Horizontal. You're going to have this as well because this is the default settings in a Unity project. So I'm going to flip that open. Um, An Input Axes has a name, so you can customize the name here if you want. I'm going to leave it as Horizontal. Uh, and then it has the a place for us to specify a negative button and a positive button. So this is already set up to have a negative button. That's the left arrow. This is the right arrow. We have an alternate negative button, which is the A key, and then the alternate positive is the D key. And these other settings you can just leave alone. These are already set up to work well with uh, keyboard. 
So this horizontal input here is already set up to do what we want because we want to move our player with the left and right arrow keys and the A and the D keys. So this one is already set to go. So now we just have to figure out how do I get access to this horizontal input from our script. So that's what we'll do next. So I'm going to go into the script here and let's go to our player script. So anytime we do movement, movement happens over time. Uh, every frame, you know, your computer has a frame rate and that's how fast it's drawing uh, your screen refreshes. And movement is really a, a bunch of tiny little steps that are flipped together so quickly in front of our eyes that it looks smooth. So anytime that we want to do movement or get input from the keyboard, we're going to do that here in our update function. Remember the update function is called once per frame. This is our game loop. So this is constantly running its instructions around and around and around. We're hoping at least 60 times per second, uh, sometimes more depending on what we're doing in our game. So that's where we're going to put our code here. So let's put a little comment here to ourselves. We need to learn how to get input from, oh, let's see if I can spell today, from the keyboard. Okay. And we know that we can use the horizontal axis uh, from the input manager. So we want to. So we already kind of identified that. Once we have that input, we then want to move the player. Those are kind of two steps here. So get input first, and then using the input will cause the player to move. And every frame we're going to be checking for input and then we're going to be moving. So this is going to, going to keep going around and around and around and cause us as long as we are holding down one of the correct keys to move in the direction that we the key tells to move in and when we stop holding a key we'll stop moving. So first of all let's see if we can get input from the keyboard. So I'm going to do a debug.log here and in the debug.log I'm going to uh, get some input from the keyboard so we can see just kind of what uh, what we get back from this. All right, so to get input from the keyboard, you start with the word input, and then you put a dot, and then you say get axis, this one right here, and then get axis needs us to tell it which of those axes uh, axes in the input manager we want. So if you remember we said that we wanted the horizontal one. So we have to spell this exactly the same way as it has been spelled in the input manager. So um, let's go back in the unity here. So in my input manager here, see this guy horizontal, capital H, spelled just like this. I have to give it this name. When I give it this name, input.getAxis will go into the input manager it'll look the sky up and then it will know what its negative and positive buttons are. It will get access to all these settings and it knows what to do already. So a lot of this is being done behind the scenes for us which is super, uh, which is super useful uh, to us in our game. Okay so here we have input access get horizontal. Now I put it in the debug.log so that it will print to my console every frame what this is giving me. This is going to return a value to me. So we're just going to see what those values are. So I'm going to save my script. I'm going to go into Unity here. Let's actually attach the player script to the player. So remember scripts are uh, instructions for an object in our game. So before they run we have to attach them to something. So I'm going to select the player here in my hierarchy and I'm just going to drag his script over and drop it down here in his inspector. And now he has the player script attached. With this attached now when the game is running his script will be active and it will do what it's supposed to. So let's make a little bit of room down here. I'm going to um, leave this in collapse for right now. And when I hit play, let's see what we get. All right, so right now that debug.log that I sent from the player script is giving me a zero. And that's because I'm not pressing any keys right now. If I go and press one of our positive keys, that was the right arrow or the D key, I'm going to press and hold it. Watch what happens in the console. All right, you notice that it took about half a second or so. It changed values up from zero, and right now it's saying one every frame. I'm still holding the key down. So when we hold down the positive key and our axis, so the right arrow or the D key, we end up with a one coming back out of our input get axis. 
if I let go, then it goes back to, let's go find it, it goes back to a zero. So see, here's when it started, it was zero. When I started pressing the key, we got bigger and bigger numbers until we got to a one. And then when I let go, we got smaller and smaller numbers until we got back to a zero, which is doing right now. So I'm going to clear this out. Let's try a negative uh, key. So I'm going to push on my left arrow. So as I hold the left arrow down, you'll see that I get smaller and smaller negative numbers until I get to a negative 1. So it goes from a 0 to a negative 1. I'm still holding the key now. When I let go, it moves over about a half a second's worth of time or so from a negative 1 back to a 0, which it's saying right now is 0. So what does that tell us? That tells us that input get access is working with the keys because it reacted to my key presses by changing its number here and that the value we get back out from this is going to be between a negative one and a positive one. So let's uh, make a note of that. So input get access returns a value between a negative one and a positive one. Okay. Uh, pushing left gives us a negative one. Pushing right gives us a positive one. No keys pressed equals zero. So that gives us some information here. Here's how input get access works. It gives us these numbers. Now, I've got a negative number, so which denotes a negative direction of movement, and I've got a positive number, which gives me a positive uh, direction of movement. If I go out into Unity here, and I click on my player and I look at his position on the X. See right now he's at a negative 0 0.05. If I move him to the left, see how his number gets more and more negative? He's now a negative 13. He goes all the way out to the edge of the screen where he's about a negative 19. As I move him to the right, his X position gets bigger. Okay, see it's getting to positive numbers now. And he'll end up over here like a positive 19 or so on this side before he hits the edge. So Moving left is a negative direction of movement because we're changing the x uh, position of our object in the negative direction. It gets smaller. Moving right is a positive movement of direction. Okay, that's why input get access is set up to get positive one if we're on a right directional key and a negative one on a left directional key. So we can use input get access to tell the computer which direction, uh, which way to change the x coordinate of our of our player. All right, so now we're getting some input. So we're going to use that input now to move our player. Okay, so this is just kind of our test here. Uh, and I'll just leave that there for now. So how do we use this to move? All right, so here's uh, what we're going to do. We are going to actually, in this case, directly change the X coordinate of our player a little bit each frame, either in a negative direction or a positive direction to give us some movement. So we're actually going to go into the transform of our object and we're going to change the value that's right here in this box in X. So Unity's got some nice built-in commands for us to do this. So we're going to say transform. So that means go to the transform of our object and a dot and then we're going to say translate with a capital T. This translate with a capital T is a command. And here it tells me that I need to give it a vector 3 translation. A vector 3 is just an x, y, z coordinate or an x, y, z amount that we want it to move. So it's going to move the transform. The transform is the position, rotation, and scale of my object in the direction and distance of the translation. The translation is the amount we want it to move. That's as what's called a vector 3. Um, so I'm going to um, say vector vector 3 
I'm going to say vector3 dot right. This is a shortcut. All right, so if I say vector3 dot right, this is going to make a vector3 that has um, a 1 in the x amount, a 0 in the y, and a 0 in the z. So really, when you make a vector3, so let's talk about this for a minute. A vector 3 is an x, y, z uh, coordinate or an amount of movement. Okay, you can use it for a couple of different things. So um, a vector 3 right would be the same thing as me saying uh, vector 3, and then I could actually specify in here an x amount to move, so that would be a 1, and then I would say 0 and a 0. Okay, so a vector 3 right says move 1 on the x, move 0 on the y, 0 on the z. It's always in this order, x, y, z. So I could actually write it like this as a vector 3, or a vector 3 right is like a shortcut that just already has the 1, 0, 0 in it. So a lot of times in our code, that's what we use. So I'm going to say right here, if I can spell it correctly, vector 3 right. So let's see what that does when we, when we, uh, when we say transform.translate vector3 right in our game. All right, let's clear our console out for right now. All right, so when I hit play, I want you to watch what happens up here to my player. I want you to watch what happens right here in the X position of the transform. So here we go. And there he goes. He just zoomed right off the screen. Do you see how his X position here is getting larger? Every frame, he is moving uh, to the right, okay, and his X position is getting bigger. Here, let's bring him back. Let's slide him over here to the side of the screen. Let's do it again. Here he goes, and he zoomed off the screen. Okay, that's because in my script here, I told it transform.translate. I said, go into the transform. Here's my transform and translate it. Trans to translate something means to change it, to move it from one point to another. Um, and I told it, change the x by 1 every frame to the right. Okay, so every frame to the right, he's moving one unit, he's moving really fast. Okay. Alright, so that is movement. So now how do we combine movement with our input here? Because we've looked at how to get our input with the input get axis horizontal, and we looked at how to move with the transform.translate. So we got to kind of combine these two together. So transform.translate vector3 right gives me just a, a constant movement of 1 uh, on the x-axis. So if I take that 1 times a value, uh, such as my input get axis, whoops, not get key, get axis, um, and then horizontal, so I'm just going to type this in here. Okay, so we got to combine these two together. Um, so we're going to say vector3 right times input get axis horizontal. Now, this, we already know what this does because we did it here. This is going to give me a number between a negative one and a positive one, okay? This, vector3 right, we talked about that, the vector3 right so let's just uh, make a note here. Right is equal to a 1, 0, 0 in our vector 3. So that means it's going to take this amount, this number here, a negative 1 to a positive 1, and it's going to take that times all three of these uh, coordinate positions. So anything times 0 is 0. So we're not going to get any movement on the y or the z. On the x, though, we're going to get 1 times whatever this is. So if I'm on a left key, this will be a negative 1. 1 times a negative 1 is a negative 1. So it's going to transform, uh, translate my player on the x-axis in a negative direction, which uh, negative direction is to the left. If I'm on no keys, input get axis horizontal is going to give me a 0. 0 times 1 is going to be 0. We're not going to have any movement of all. We're going to sit still. If I'm pressing on the right arrow key, I'm going to get a positive 1 back from this. So a positive 1 here times a positive 1 here would equal a positive 1, which will make me move to the right. So that's how we combine these two guys together. So let's save this and test it out in our scene. 
I should now be able to control him left and right with the keyboard keys. So we're hitting play. You notice that he's standing still. I'm going to push the right arrow key and there he goes to the right. When I stop pushing, he stops. If I go to the left, he goes to the left. Now he's zooming really fast, so I don't have really good control of him, but I do have control of him with the keyboard. I can move him left and right or not at all if I um, stop pressing keys. All right, so that's kind of step one of our problem here was to uh, figure out how to get input from the keyboard. We did that by learning about input get axis horizontal. Step two was learning how to move our character in general. We figured that out using transform.translate. And then by combining those two things together, we have solved our problem of having control of our player character with the keyboard and allowing him to move left and right. So our next problem is uh, control because he's moving way too fast and we don't have very good control of him. We also have a problem here of update being a frame-based uh, function which means it's running once per frame. So our speed right now is being controlled by how often update runs. That's hooked to my frame rate. So if uh, you understand how computers work, depending on your processor and your graphics card and other factors in your computer, your frame rate is going to not be consistent. Frame rate is going to change uh, over time depending on what you're asking the computer to do. It's also going to be different from computer to computer. So an older computer that doesn't have as good of a processor or maybe graphics card is not going to be able to draw frames as quickly as a brand new, you know, top of the line, newest equipment type of a computer. So that's a problem. You want your games to run consistently between um, different machines. So to solve that problem of frame rate, we have to make sure that we're moving our objects based on a certain amount of distance over time instead of a certain amount of distance per frame. So right now we're moving one unity unit per frame. And we want to get that to be one unity unit per second. So to do that, we just add a little more to our, our uh, list of things we're doing here. So we have vector three right times our input, which gives us a value right now between a negative one and a positive one, depending on what key we're pressing and we're going to take all that times something called time dot delta time time is the built-in unity time functions okay we can get the the, the time clock uh, and other things in here uh, when you're playing your game there is a clock that is running and what delta time is is delta time is how much time has passed between the last frame that was drawn and the current frame. So remember, this happens in between frames. So this is keeping track of our frame rate and it's keeping track of how much time it takes between each frame. And when we use that, uh, that will cause our movement here to be chopped up over a second worth of time because all these small little decimal fractional seconds of time when they're added up over one second of our update function running will equal up to one. So that'll make this now move one unit per second instead of one unit per frame. So let's go out into Unity and see how this uh, works now. So when I hit play and I push on my right key, you notice that he's moving, but now he's moving a whole lot slower than he was before. I can still go both ways, but now he's moving and his speed should be consistent. It's uh, moving one unit per second in Unity right now. And because we're doing this according to time, it doesn't matter which machine or computer that we run this on, it'll always run at a constant rate based on time. Since time is the same on every computer, a second is always a second, um, that takes care of the problems that we were talking about here a moment ago. Okay, so now I've got uh, movement with the keyboard. That was kind of step one here. Uh, getting the input. I've applied that input to my player so now I actually can make him move and now I've made it so he's moving uh, over time instead of over a frame. So the next thing we need to do is get control of how fast he's going because this is really slow. This will make a pretty boring game. We want to be able to control his speed. So that means we need to go back into our script and we need to define a variable that we can put a value in that will allow us to uh, control 
the speed that our player moves at. So let's put a variable up here at the top of our script and we'll just make this public so we can play with it out in the inspector and we'll just call this speed uh, and the type of variable I'm going to put here is an int. We'll just use an integer here. I don't think we need decimal level control of our speed. Let's set that up there. And then in the start function here, let's go ahead and give it a value. Speed equals, let's try 10. All right, so it's a good idea when you make variables to comment them for what they are. So this is the speed in units per second that the player will move. Okay, so this is units per second. If I set it to 10, that's going to be 10 units per second. And then all I have to do to use this is to take all of this in here times 10. Or, well, or times my speed, which is 10. All right, so now to step through this, remember vector 3 right just has a 1, 0, 0 in a vector 3. Okay, input get axis horizontal gives me a negative 1 to a positive 1 or 0 for not touching any keys. This just chops up that uh, amount of movement uh, over time, and then speed will just multiply that by how many units per second I want it to move. Right? So right now, before we put the speed in, we were moving one unit per second. If I take one unit per second times speed, which is 10, I get 10 units per second. So this will allow me to move faster. So we'll hit uh, Unity, and we will hit play and now when I move see how I'm moving a whole lot faster so I'm moving back and forth uh, in here and um, that's probably not a bad amount of speed to move in but we can play with it one of the nice things about having your public variables here like if I make this into a 20 instead and go click back in my game window now I'm moving at 20 so you can see how fast that is that might be maybe a little too fast um, so then we can kind of play, we can say, well, what about 15? And, you know, 15 isn't bad. That gives us a little bit more speed to work with. So somewhere in there, uh, you just play with it until you find a value that you like. Um, now, one thing to notice is, see how I've got it 15 right now? When I stop play mode, it's going to pop back down to uh, whatever it was before. So it's zero. I'm setting that in the start function. So when I hit play again here, it's going to go back to 10. So if you want it to stick and you're doing... Um, an assignment here inside of your script, then you're going to have to go back in and change the value. Okay. The other thing we could do is we could just not initialize speed at all. We could take this line out, and then speed will be zero. But then if I establish a speed like 15 out here in the inspector, and I hit play, all right, I've set the value here. When I stop my play mode it'll keep it. So you can also do that and just set the value of your variables out here in the inspector. Um, and if I'm in play mode and I change this value to let's say 20 and then I stop playing it's going to go back to what I had at the beginning. So it will remember what you had before you hit play. That allows you to make some changes and when you come back you've got your original settings and if you found something like better you just have to go in and change it outside of play mode. Okay. So now I've got my player moving back and forth and I've got control over how fast he's moving and that's very useful to us through this speed variable. Okay, so our goal was to try to get the player to move back and forth uh, using keyboard input 